Well, I guess this would have been a little bit more of an enjoyable week this week of training. Yeah, it was uh, just to get, uh, I guess, a win for the for the group and the club, and um, I guess take the monkey off the back as far as that concerned. It was was really important and builds a bit of confidence in, in what we're doing. So yeah, it's been a good week. Did you notice a bit of a change in how the guys were holding themselves at training? Oh, I think the boys have been terrific the whole season. Uh, I think there's probably a bit, bit more spring in the step. Um, would have been nice if it was an eight day rest, we enjoyed it a couple more days longer but we get the short break and back into port so we, we focused pretty quickly after um, this win um, to move on. It was, you got that limited break back, you, you need to re recheck yourself pretty quick. How important is it that we now start a roll and get two in a row now? How much, how much emphasis are you putting on this weekend? Oh, we do, we don't, so when you focus on the actual win loss you, you very rarely achieve it. it Coaches use the word process a lot, don't we? Because that's the bit that results in the win. So um, we will attack Port the same way. Um, we do every opposition and um, give them the respect they deserve. They're a very good football team. We've got a lot of highly talented players uh, in their unit. So, um, so yeah, so they're a good team. Just on Port, they're, um, they're pretty hot and cold. Well, they're, they're a good side, but they, they're fairly inconsistent at the moment. How, how are you going to approach them? Yeah, you're right. They've had some ups and downs in, in all facets of the game, with stoppage and turnover, and the, the numbers are a bit mixed at the moment. No, you, all you do is expect the best of any team to turn up. Last time we played, they, they murdered us from stoppage. That was the big area we really fell down. Um, I think it was 10 goals to zero from stoppage, and that was probably the, the scoreboard at the end of the day. So uh, we've been working hard at those things. Um, we identified them and and. Um, talk about a train it, that sort of stuff, but uh, we just have to perform it on the night. And you put special uh, focus on someone like Chad Wingard, especially forward, he's so dangerous, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Ch Chad's one that I think every team targets um, as a forward line player because he's so talented and, and can kick goals quickly, so anyone that has that high impact part of their game tends to get attention, whether they be midfielders or forwards, um, and he's definitely that for them. The uh, AFL commission's in town today. Will yeah. you get a chance to speak to them personally? or? Oh, we had a dinner last night, um, ordered the octopus, it was good. Um, steak, not bad. But uh, yeah, they got, they're, they're, yeah, they're in town for the commission meeting, obviously, and, and dealing with an array of issues. And a lot of it, obviously, is a part of Queensland footy, not just us, us but the Suns. So um, yeah, it was, it's, it's good they're in town and we can talk through some of the things we need as a club. What are, what are some of those things that you'd like to see them? Oh, most of our things are really just the things that every other club takes for granted as far as facilities, spending of the soft cap, uh, make sure we can spend our full salary cap. Th things that um, most clubs really just have at hand. Um, uh, I mean, really, that's, that's all we're really asking for. Can you tell us? I think so. I mean, uh, we, we do with obviously the AFL more than the Commission itself. Um, this is a little bit different, but obviously they approve a lot of the things that the AFL want to implement in place. So I think it's important they, they hear our story and um, they're very receptive and, and obviously want Queensland footy to go well as well as everybody. We want a, a very even competition, that's what it's about. So um, yeah, we'll wait and see well, today. Um, it's about as far as I, my knowledge stops and starts, the rest with Swanee and the, the team to, um, to have the discussions. Spending that soft cap obviously seems to be quite important. Can you tell us tangibly what difference it makes if you can spend up to the cap? Uh, I'll get paid a lot more, Michael. That's, the, uh, <laughs> that, that's a really good part. No, I'm not even joking with that. But uh, no, you, obviously there's more things you can provide for our playing group um, as far as resources and um, things they can get better as far as skill development wise and um, yeah, leadership resources, um, just stuff within our um, game planning, opposition strategy stuff that we could do more resources in as well. There's a lot of areas um, that we could invest in in our footy club. Um, won't go through them all now, but uh, we probably wouldn't spend it all in the first year, Michael, but uh, we, we definitely would be helpful to um, to be able to, you know, as I said before, just just get the, the base minimum of what every other team in the competition is doing. And for the team of, I guess, the future, how vital is it that you do get those? Oh, I think it'll happen. Um, I'm very confident. I'm very confident we'll get the new facility and very confident we'll, we'll tick all those boxes over time. We're, but just at this point in time, we're a little bit behind in those areas, that's all. Um, but we're working hard towards it. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, but um, you definitely need the support of... Uh, the game itself and the AFL to help those things where we're at at the moment. Will the club be looking for the priority pick at the end of the year? We haven't discussed the priority pick at all. Um, I, there may be some uh, informal murmurings in the background, but we have not. Had any, and even with our discussions we have in football subcommittee, the topic hasn't come up. No, I'm just uh, nice Tom Rockliffe. Is he training today? Yeah, Tom was there. Yep. Can we talk about your debut talk? Yeah, finally. <laughs> You're on Archie. It's his show for crying. You've been waiting a long time, Arch. Yeah, so what, why has Archie uh, got the nod now? I suppose. Or what have you seen different this year? 
Uh, I think Arch has been stiff. Uh, there's probably been three or four times where he could have come in the team and something's happened where Steph was nearly missed and Arch was ready to play and, and so on and so forth. And then Arch was out, and then which opened the door for Trent West. And I, I think he's sort of unfortunately just missed that right opportunity a few times. I'd love to bring him in earlier. It's, uh, his tap work and then his, um, you know, his, his follow up work's been terrific and improving uh, really well. So and we're wrapped. I mean, this is one of our academy boys, a convert from basketball, and we watched some of Arch's stuff. His first kicks uh, a couple of weeks ago, they're pretty good. What do you think, Arch? Yeah, shocking. <laughs> pretty lucky to hit my foot, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> What's been the biggest learning curve for you, Arch, from that rugby and basketball background? Uh, it's probably just you know continuity and gameplay. Uh, all these boys had you know that 10 years experience before I joined the sport, and then you know sort of learn this game style and where to run just sort of instinctively is yeah, it was the biggest challenge. But you know I'm getting better with each game I play. It's funny that this has actually been a blur um, these past couple of years because um, you know I'm in I'm in my third year now, but it feels like my first because that first year was such a such a steep learning curve, and then the second as well. So it's nice to get some consistency performance and stuff now so um, yeah. I, I, I feel like now that you're at this level that and you're debuting that it, it justifies your decision to, to leave basketball and come to footy? Oh it, it justified as soon as I got here like I, I knew coming in this position takes a long time to develop I mean Ruckman who have played uh, previously before me you know are still developing um, so um, no I, I'm I, from the get-go I was happy with the decision I made yeah. But still, Archie, to actually now play an AFL game, does it feel like you've been fully vindicated? With that yeah. Decision at the time, obviously. Oh, it's obviously amazing. Like the excitement's actually definitely outweighing the nerves. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm more excited just to run out with the with the older boys who I've been training all pre-season with and uh, training all during the week with. But actually, you know, join the same field as them. So that's the most exciting thing about all this. Yeah. Uh, who, who do you look up to in that team? Like, who's who sort of mentored you through? Who are you? Oh uh, well. You got to say the rough one because we spend so much time together. So Trent West and Steph Martin have been great, and Matty Lewenberger early on. But um, really, uh, probably Dan Merritt is sort of a shoulder to sort of talk to um, around the club, and he's been terrific. He's good with all the younger guys. He's just a great person to have around the club. And um, I spent a lot of time with Ben Hudson as well, who's uh, yeah, he's terrific as well. I mean, all the coaches are really invested in our development, and um, yeah, they've been terrific with me. Yeah, old man, he was a, an elite sportsman himself. Has he given you any kind of guidance on how to? No, no. The best. It's funny. The best thing about this is, um, you know, this, this is something I can say it was all me. I mean, there was always that that uh, in basketball that, you know, he he's your dad. Uh, you know, you got the height from him. But it's funny. I reckon most of my athleticism comes from my mum, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, um, but yes, you know, uh, when we do talk about it, it's it's pretty. I uh, just tell him how I'm going and how much I'm loving it here. And uh, yeah, he's pretty supportive of that. What's he like? What do you know much about? He knows, yeah, nothing about it. Yeah, so, yeah. He'll be, he'll be here tomorrow night. Yeah, about half of Brisbane are coming to watch. Actually, I think my mum asked for upwards of 50 tickets. I think she's going to get the old no, but um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people want to come and have a look. So, we good. Lepe, is there any? I know uh, you've said he's been close a few times, but is there any benefit in Archie having to wait so long to, to make his debut? Oh, it definitely does from a hunger perspective and I know Archie's been waiting a long time and he's very impatient like a lot of our boys and wanting to play but um, as Archie mentioned his path's a little bit different to most. Um, Ruckman do take a little bit longer as we know and also with Archie's background and learning the game uh, well it's always going to be second, third year. I remember my first year I said Archie there was an opportunity he almost could have played and uh, the look on his face he nearly died walking out of the room so uh, it, mentally probably wasn't ready even three years ago but now it's been knocking the door down to play so all those things obviously um, build your resilience along the way and, and he's ready to go so we're, we're looking forward to seeing how he goes. And what's your instructions or expectations for him tomorrow? Uh, Rackman win the hit outs, <laughs> that's <laughs> it, and, and, and support your midfielders and that's all you have to do. It's a very unique role to Ruck, it's obviously um, uh, it's very different to most other positions and it's a uh, specialist position and Arch uh, should have confidence doing it because he's been doing it well at the next level down. So Archie, what made you actually choose that AFL part? Well, initially it was um, to improve basketball. I, I opted out of going as a 70, uh, just graduated to college um, because you know you can have an extra year with how late they finish over, overseas. So I thought I'd play bas I'd play the summer program in the academy uh, for as a bit of fitness, really. And then from there, you know, I was playing in a winning Neffels team. I ended up in my like eighth game of football. I won a Neffels premiership. So. Um, 
I, I it just you know it just grabbed me and um, the opportunity to stay here, stay with my family. I was way too immature to move overseas and live in another country. Probably still am, but um, yeah. So it, yeah, I just sort of developed a passion for the game and yeah, yeah I love what I do. Going, going towards the end of the year now, what's what kind of goals are you setting yourself? What's the target for the last few games of the season? What well, it's all about winning as many games as we can for us. Um, we, we, we have got some issues as far as the injury front started to hit. I think we've got seven or eight season enders now, and I think our reserves have about six guys running around there this week. So there, there is some dripping back, and as you see, we had five changes. So um, a lot of those are all one, one to two weekers. So there will be some guys coming back. Um, but yeah, we've got to keep our list together. Um, just be excited about winning some games of footy. I mean, obviously, there's nothing in September for us, and um, but just enjoy that winning feeling. And fight for it, and, and fight for those wins. I mean, it. You know, we're not the sort of club that plays for anything beyond winning or what's happening in the future. So you don't have to worry about that. But you know, really for us, it's about. You know, if our midfield, and particularly our midfield and our leaders within there, stay strong and give our young forwards good opportunity, we, we'll get, we can have some excitement and really worry opposition. Sam Skinner's uh, setback serious at all? Is that a... we're, we're unsure yet. It's a, it's a very emotional time for Sam and, and all of us. Really, I mean, I. I feel I, I, I was, did a knee at 17 like Sam and, and came up here and um, it can be a lonely place for rehab. I, we're, with, we're hopeful there's nothing more than just a minor setback. Um, but adding to the emotion of being told you're playing and then you heard it and then to miss. And, but we'll have scans back to hopefully um, take out anything that's serious. But yeah, pretty emotional time um, for Sam and myself and the club just to, you know, after that long rehab, you can imagine what it feels like to to miss out right on the death nail. So, hopeful for good news, Michael.